If you somehow haven't heard the news, a tourist expedition of five individuals on a submersible has gone missing above the RMS Titanic, 700 kilometers from the coast of Newfoundland. Communication was lost one hour and 45 minutes into the dive, and it did not resurface at the scheduled time. However, notably, even before this tragedy, there were multiple controversies regarding this vessel, which we're going to talk about in this video. We're also going to discuss why, among all these controversies, that someone would still decide to go on this trip. Now, as of recording this video, this is an ongoing situation. However, the outcome does look bleak. By the time this video comes out, the most likely outcome is that these lives have been Loss. Obviously, this is a very serious situation, and no matter how you feel about the individuals on the ship, I don't believe anyone deserves the fate that these people have been subject to. So for the particular portion of this video where we're talking about this incident, we're going to be treating it with care. The submersible named Titan was designed by the Ocean Gate Company, and it is designed to dive as deep as 4 kilometers or 15,000 feet, which is approximately where the Titanic lies. Each dive it makes has a guide, a pilot, and three guests. Each of these guests pays $250,000 for the privilege, and are referred to as mission specialists by the company. These missing people include Pakistani billionaires Shazam, Zada DeWood, his son, Suleiman DeWood, British billionaire Hamish Harding, former French Navy commander, submersible pilot, and researcher Paul Henry Najolet, and then Stockton Rush, the founder of Ocean Gate Inc., who runs the company that made this submarine and then performs these dives. While the trip was only meant to last eight hours, the Titan does have life support capabilities that can support five people for up to 96 hours. The submersible is 6.7 meters in length, so with five people, it's quite a tight fit. They sit barefoot, cross-legged. It features a pretty basic toilet with a partition, one small single window, one large monitor that can display various images, two smaller monitors, one for control and one for sonar. It's sealed from the outside with 17 bolts with no other way in or out. Notably, there's no onboard navigation system. It relies on simple text-based messages from the support ship, providing distances and directions. That's the main difference between submarines and submersibles. Submersibles rely on having a support ship on the surface, while submarines tend to be pretty self-sufficient. While the insides of submarines and submersibles tend to look more like this, the Titan submersible actually only has one single physical button. The whole sub itself is controlled by a single, $30 Bluetooth wireless PC game controller. For a lot of people, this is mind-blowing, me included. I refuse to even use a wireless keyboard on my computer because I don't trust it. However, surprisingly, this is actually pretty standard in the military. They'll use similar controllers for like drones and tanks and subs. That, surprisingly, is one of the less worrying aspects of this ship. In 2022, a reporter named David Pogue was doing a piece on this ship and he noted himself that the whole thing seemed very jerry-rigged, almost MacGyver-esque, with several important pieces simply being improvised off-the-shelf materials, noting the controller, the lights, and that simple lead construction pipes were used to a ballast. It's also on this trip that the reporter noted that the Titan lost contact with the support ship for five whole hours. They had no idea where it was. Communications at these kinds of depths are already very spotty. Again, you can only really communicate with simple text-based messages. This is because light doesn't travel very easily through water. It blocks the propagation of electromagnetic waves very quickly, meaning no radar, no GPS, and all forms of light are absorbed within a couple of meters. At the time the reporter did his piece on the ship, he also noted that the Titan is not equipped with an emergency locator beacon. He's also not the only person to express concerns about this vessel. In 2018, the Marine Tech Society wrote a letter to the Ocean Gate CEO expressing unanimous concern regarding the development of Titan and the planned Titanic expedition, indicating that current experimental approach could result in negative outcomes from minor to catastrophic that would have serious consequences for everyone in the industry. In the same year, the former Ocean Gate director of Maritime Resources claimed he had been wrongly terminated due to bringing up concerns about the Titan's ability to operate in such depths, saying that the submarine was not even safe enough to go a third of the way down to the Titanic. This was specifically regarding the acrylic window, and OceanGate refused to fund research into a window that would work sufficiently at these depths. The CEO Rush has also been quoted as saying, the US Passenger Vessel Safety Act needlessly prioritized passenger safety over commercial innovation. He's been quoted as saying, at some point, safety is pure waste. Also, according to OceanGate, Titan sub was never checked to see if it was up to standard due to its innovation. Also, when you go on the sub, you have to sign a waiver, and that waiver said, this experimental vessel has not been approved or certified by any regulatory body. In 2022, one of the thrusters on the Titan was installed backwards, causing the vessel to spin out of control in circles. Somehow they managed to bypass this issue by holding the controller sideways. Also in 2022, the submersible featured battery issues and had to be manually attached to the lifting platform. So when you take all of this into account, the almost improvised design, the battery issues, mistakes in installation, poor communication systems, and numerous safety concerns, this trip 
looks like a disaster waiting to happen. Now, it's worth noting that the hull itself is actually meant to be pretty solid. This was co-designed with NASA and the University of Washington. It's worth noting, however, that the experts have said that the scrubber system aboard the submersible is likely to fail before the oxygen does. A scrubber is a system on a submersible that essentially it, it cleans the CO2 that is expelled from when you exhale. But again, the hull itself is secure. So at time of recording, there is a chance that these individuals are still alive. We just can't find them. And they have no real way of contacting anyone. Also installed in the Titan are seven different ways for the sub to return to the surface. From propellers to flotation systems and that ballast system we mentioned earlier. For that system, it's a shelf and they all move to one side of the sub to tilt it and metal pipes roll off the shelf. So that literally only requires them to manually rock the sub. So the question is, why can't they find this thing? A couple of main theories behind all this. So take everything I said with a grain of salt. I am not an expert. I'm just delivering all the information I've been able to find. I've gone through the most reputable sources I can possibly find. Again, this is an evolving situation. So if I've gotten anything wrong, please let me know in the comments. First situation is that there was a leak in the vessel causing the submersible to be crushed under the depths. Again, although the hull was solid, there was a lot of concern about that window. Also, if the bolts have been getting reused that seal them in, there could be some weathering there. In the case of any kind of degradation here, it's likely that their deaths would have been instant. The water pressure from outside the sub versus inside the sub has a PSI difference of about, I think it's 5,000 to 6,000 PSI at, at those deaths. Now compare this to like the uh, NASA space station that has a PSI difference of 14.7. Paul Henry, the researcher on the vessel has been quoted as saying, doesn't matter if you're 11 meters down or 11 kilometers down, something bad happens, the result is always the same. When you're in very deep water, you're a dead person before you realize that something is happening, so it's just not a problem. Now, while the submersible imploding initially seemed to be the most likely scenario, rescuers in the area have been able to detect a banging sound. This has been happening every 30 minutes, and it lends itself to the theory that these people may still be alive. If the banging was consistent, they'd probably write it off, but because it's every 30 minutes, that lends some hope. So, potentially, they have made it to the Titanic and have gotten stuck on the debris. From what I've been able to find, only three manned submersibles in the world are able to go to that deaths and the titan is one of them 4000 meters deep there are only 10 vehicles in the whole world that can go 4000 meters or deeper and all of them are certified except the titan and none of those subs are equipped with any kind of rescue capabilities whatsoever i should note that these are manned subs there are drone subs that can go down there however already several of these have been crushed by the water pressure trying to get down there even specialized military subs can only get to about 4,000 feet down the deepest rescue ever performed was in 1973 this was with the pisces 3 this was at a depth of 1,500 feet now technology has come a long way but the titanic sits at 12,500 feet now maybe it's not stuck on the wreck of the titanic but all seven means of them returning to the surface have failed, meaning that they're drifting around subject to the ocean currents. In this scenario, the most likely outcome is that they'll never ever be found. The final scenario is that the Titan has surfaced, we just can't find it. With no emergency beacon, tether, or radio, it could just be floating out in the ocean somewhere. Finding things in the ocean is famously difficult. Even shipwreck survivors have seen rescue planes fly right over them without seeing them. Also, the Titan is painted white, which doesn't exactly stand out in the ocean. In this case, if they're not found soon, it's equally as bad as every other scenario. Because because they're sealed in from the outside. There is no manual release from the inside of this craft. Even if rescuers find them, they need the specific tool to get them out. The seas are also famously rough in this area. This was going to be the only dive they were able to do this year because of continued bad weather. However, I've heard when the Titan resurfaces, it's meant to automatically connect to the Starlink servers. But obviously, if there's some kind of system fault, then that's not going to happen. Now, with all that you know, with all the controversies and every bad possibility that could happen on this thing, why would anyone pay a quarter of a million dollars for this experience? With all that can go wrong, and honestly, such a poor view through this tiny window, you couldn't pay me a quarter of a million dollars to go in this thing. But there's a couple of reasons we should look at here. The first being the billionaire space race. Just hold, hold on with me here, hold on. Billionaires like Jeff Bezos or Richard Branson or Elon Musk are rushing to monetize space in various ways. Whether it be colonizing Mars or establishing satellites or an industrial base or whatever the hell they're talking about. But what applies to this case specifically is space tourism. Richard Branson made a suborbital space flight a mere month before Jeff Bezos did simply to beat him there. And then Jeff Bezos responded by pushing it further by becoming the first billionaire to pass the common line. Now, if you're wondering how this is relevant, everyone knows that saying about how we 
probably know more about space than we do our own oceans. But here it's worth noting that more people have been to space than people have been to the wreckage of the Titanic. So that's why there's been such a rush in submersible tourism is that they're trying to follow this same trend as space tourism. Hamish Harding, one of those lost on the Titan, actually himself participated in space tourism. He went on one of those suborbital missions through Jeff Bezos' company. Also, this behavior is not limited to the super rich. Many people have the need to be among the first to do something, even if that something has high risks and repercussions, like with the Nutty Putty Cave incident, or even reaching the highest point of the world, Mount Everest, where they literally use corpses as markers. Now, Mount Everest has lately fallen out of vogue, considering the sheer amount of people that have now completed the climb. With less and less unexplored places in the world, it makes sense that people are turning to space and the ocean. So there's definitely an appeal of being one of the first to go to one of the deepest parts of the ocean. But why are people so specifically interested in the Titanic itself? You might think that I'm obsessed with the Titanic, given that I've made like 10 videos and this is my second one about the Titanic. But I swear I'm not. I'm more obsessed about how people are obsessed about the Titanic. Thinking of the Titanic happened over 100 years ago in 1912, but to this day is probably the most talked about modern historical event other than World War One and World War Two. And even then, I would argue that more people know about the sinking of the Titanic than they do the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Now, among those most obsessed with the Titanic is, of course, James Cameron, who's famously done multiple submersible trips to the Titanic. But probably more famously, he is the director and writer and producer of the film Titanic. At the time, it was one of the most expensive films ever made with a budget of $200 million, with a lot of that budget going to visiting the actual wreckage of the Titanic and also building a replica of the Titanic, which was subsequently wrecked. This film also became the highest grossing film of all time with a box office of over $2.2 billion. It held the top spot for 13 years until James Cameron beat it again with Avatar. That is a crazy long time for one film to hold the top spot. It's now been beaten by Avengers Endgame and Avatar 2. However, if you adjust for inflation, it's still beating both those films. James Cameron turned his special interest into one of the most prolific films in history. I've talked about this before, but Australian billionaire Clive Palmer has been trying to construct an accurate replica of the Titanic for years. As a seaworthy vessel, like, people will be able to go on cruises on it. Obviously with improved safety features. This has been going on for years though and it looks like construction's never gonna be finished. Asylum Films has found the Titanic is still so profitable that they've made not one, but two movies about it. Titanic 2, which I've previously made a video on, and then Titanic 666, which is like a horror film. But all this is a symptom, it's not a cause of why people are so drawn to the Titanic. Obviously, this wasn't the first boat to sink, and it hasn't been the last. It's not even the cause for the most ship-related deaths. I think a lot of people kind of forget that the sinking of the Titanic was a tragedy. 1,500 people died. Making a tourist attraction of a mass grave really doesn't sit right with me. It almost feels disrespectful. It's not done tastefully like a memorial museum. It's more of a thrill-seeker's journey. People tend to be captivated by macabre tragedies and, in a sense, dehumanize the victims. We can forget that these were real people. Obviously, an extreme example of this would be Logan Paul in the forest. But for most people, murder mysteries, documentaries, tragedy in the news, it is incredibly fascinating. I mean, for example, look at this case with this submarine going missing. This news is huge. Lives are lost at sea all the time and they don't get this kind of attention. Obviously, I'm a part of this and while I'm trying to be respectful, I can't help but be so incredibly fascinated about the whole thing. And I'm really not trying to say that people who are interested in this kind of thing are bad people or that if you're interested in the Titanic, you're a bad person. I'm not trying to say that at all. I think most people who are interested in this kind of thing do recognize that it was an absolutely horrific event. But although the Titanic caused so many deaths, it has been romanticized more and more over the years. Some may attribute this to James Cameron's Titanic, obviously that was inspired by the event, that's his feelings about it. And when he's talked about the lives that were lost, he's always been very respectful, at least from what I've been able to see. So I think a lot of the romanticism behind the Titanic comes from that time period. It was a pre-war luxury boat, it was a pinnacle of technology for the time. And what really set it apart from the other ships is that how it was marketed as being unbreakable, unsinkable. And on its first voyage, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And what sets it apart from tragedies like war is that the horrors that happened here weren't done maliciously, it was an accident. There's no real villain except except for an iceberg. In the story of the Titanic, there's only really heroes and survivors. And obviously, there was no phones at the time. There was such mystery behind the sinking of the ship, and all they really had to go off was witness accounts. And almost all the survivors were women and children, because they were prioritized for the life rafts, but a lot of what they said as, as witness reports were dismissed. The sinking of the Titanic differed from your regular boat, because it actually split in half before sinking. Most boats will just descend as one piece. The survivors obviously saw the ship split in two, but all their testimonies were dismissed as some kind of mass hysteria. Because because why would women and children know anything they're talking about? This whole thing was debated for years until the wreckage of the Titanic was found in 1985. And the ship was found to be in two pieces, hundreds of feet apart, finally validating the few witnesses left. And I saw that ship break in half. 
And for so many years, people have argued with me about that. But now at last, it has been proven beyond all doubt that she did break in half. I know she did, I saw her. I think for a lot of people, piecing together the stories of the survivors is a big part of the interest in the Titanic. The whole thing sunk and it was swallowed by the ocean and wasn't found for 70 whole years. It's a crime scene that disappeared for a generation. And in that sense, I get why people have such a curiosity about it. Currently, it's worth noting that the Titanic itself is literally disappearing. It looks like it's rusting away, but what's actually happened is that it's getting eaten by a deep sea bacteria. And this is happening at an accelerating rate. As of making this, we don't know what's happened to the crew of the Titan, but it does seem Seem like that after 111 years the titanic has claimed five more victims i hope that soon we can let this mass grave fade away while i absolutely think that the initial dives were so important for scientific reasons and to document history as well as to give the survivors closure it's probably time that we move on turning into a tourist attraction is one thing but to do so in such an unsafe manner that more lives have been lost it's beyond tragic we don't want this to be another mount everest situation where you have to climb over the bodies of your predecessors and they just become another attraction to the site i don't want to sound like I'm blaming the victims of the people on the Titan. At the end of the day, people who were not experts in the field put their trust in someone who was, who repeatedly dismissed the need for safety. I really hope they can be found and I really do think there's a lot to learn from this entire situation. The whole thing was a tribute to man's arrogance. The man can be so arrogant as to build something and claim that it is undestroyable, if you like. It's, it's the most arrogant thing to say. True is the Titanic had struck rocks, or a tempest and storm and sunk. That would be one thing, but this was a ship that needn't have had any loss of lives. And as I say, all these years later, this interest is profound. And it's because there was no need for anyone to die. No one should have died. Sorry that it was a bit of a sad one today. I've always found the Titanic cultural phenomenon incredibly fascinating. And I was already looking into making another video about it. Unfortunately, this video only really came together with the recent events. I hope you were interested in this too. And I would really genuinely like to know all your thoughts about this situation. I promise that now this is out of my system, we'll have a lighter topic for the next video. Thanks so much for watching this whole thing. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you next time. Ciao.